but dare I say it's still Zelda. Well, but it doesn't play like any Zelda you've played before. Right. Because By now play, I'm you mean shit on the, the interface, right? Yeah, I mean, you're not talking about the actual content of the does... game, which is actually very much in line with every other right. Zelda right. game. Right. How you draw on maps. Okay. That, that's true. How, you know, controlling Link and your interface with the game is completely different. Yes, and that, and that makes it. I want you to go this way, so please follow my line. And you don't think that's more fun than just pressing A to throw a boomerang? I could live without it, you know? Unlike you, I mean, I still have some problems with the game, but I like the interface a lot. I like the precision that it offers. And even though at first you're like, uh, it's kind of clumsy, I don't really like it, after a while, you tweak to it and you're like, okay, this is cool. And then you start using the, the special weapons, like bombs. I always, I never use bombs as weapons in the Zelda games unless I absolutely have to because they're just so freaking annoying to throw. You can never get them to land where yeah. you want to. But here you tap where you want it to go, you throw it and it lands there, it hits an enemy and it explodes right away. And like, it really opens up a lot of new strategies for me. That's, they did do a really good job of completely redoing how you interact with the world, that's new. And the storyline is a direct sequel to you know, a game that they thought that people had forgotten about, Wind, right. Wind Waker. So in, in those ways, it's it is like surprising. Years since Wind Waker, how could we have forgotten about it? <laughs> well, but yeah, Twilight, that long. Twilight Princess was such a like, you know, a 180 in the other direction. Shane in terms is of a great Zelda yes. apologist. <laughs> I don't think you're actually looking at this from a genuine big picture standpoint. You know, like what you are sensibly doing is is you're you're playing another Zelda game. You're you're Link. You're doing all those things. It's all the all the hallmarks of a Zelda game. Right. The interface is different. And I never really said that like it's outright bad. I mean, I still gave the game an eight out of out of ten, but it's just it's just more Zelda. I think like Nintendo's development philosophy is very very conservative. It's like okay, we've created this innovative new hardware, so let's make the. It's just like their controllers. You, Nintendo makes games for their controllers. They make their controllers right. for their games. They like the rest of the industry can hop on if they want to, yeah. but screw it if they I don't. Mean, it, it is you obvious know? they did reshape Zelda for DS. Like all of the puzzles are so observational. It's like look look at the world. By draw observational, it. you mean they give you a little explanation of what the puzzle solution is, right? And you mark it and on then your you map. Mark it on your map. It, that's yeah. not a puzzle. That's being told. <laughs> what to do it's so it's a, that's the puzzle. biggest it's, no that's the biggest disappointment problem the solving <laughs> the puzzles are too simple i mean i think the game was for a younger audience in some ways and they made simpler puzzles because of that and i think the puzzles do get repetitive i agree with that they're not awesome but they are they are different for zelda and the game also got rid of a lot of the uh, the chaff you associate with Zelda, like pieces of heart containers. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't like sad to see trading that. items in towns. All that stuff's gone. So a lot a lot of the same old things you've been doing ten times now are gone in this game. So I give them credit for like streamlining it a little bit that way. Well, all games should have something new, right? All games like so like if, if the next game has new things and you're gonna act like wow it has new things. Well, here, here's the thing with Zelda is that with Zelda games, we've played the Zelda games, the same Zelda game, how many times? Every game since A Link to the Past. <laughs> is the same Zelda game when you get down to the basics. I mean, games like and Majora's they're, Mask they're did mix it up okay. more. Yeah, but that's more Not like every game structure. Game. You're still doing a lot of the same stuff. It's just that you're doing them over and right. over again in an attempt to, you know, yeah. get to the end. After a while, they have to just, you know, cut the strings and say, okay, we can't keep remaking the exact same game over and over again. This is a Zelda that everybody's like got their panties up in a bunch about now because they just want it to be the best thing ever. That's just, that's just what, you know, Loyalist dudes. It's okay to be a Zelda fan. I mean, you and I have both been Zelda fans for over 20 years, and it's okay to play a Zelda game and be, okay, this is a little insubstantial, it's a little easy, it's a little repetitive, and still, you can still love that game, you know? Do you really love running around, cutting grass, getting rupees out of the grass, and all that stuff, and oh, here, now I can purchase this upgrade, and it's like, it's all very predictable. I mean, it's still but it's still a very quality, high quality game. It's oh. like, we'll put together. Well, but if, if none of the tenants of Zelda were there, if like you didn't do any of those things in this game, then yeah, you people would, you people like, would cry like Castlevania, out. You know, right. you've got you've to whip candles and get hearts and stuff like that. But there's got to be a more interesting well, way to do this I thing. Mean, and, and the game, it does play, it plays on those expectations. You know, when like things happen in the game and surprise you, make you laugh because you know Zelda, Zelda history and how Link is supposed to react to things. But as I said, the game does surprise you. There are bosses in this game. Like you fight Dodongo, but you fight him in a completely new way you've never fought him before. And even though the boss has been in many Zeldas, you've never fought him like this. I think you guys are just like, discounting some of those encounters later in the game that are really unique. You, you, you act like they get a free pass or extra credit for, you know, oh, you finally fight this boss in a different way. Well, thank God, you know, that's like saying like, oh, in this Mario game, you get to kill Bowser in a different way, you know? It's like, well, I should hope so. And like I said, this is a good game, but I, I'm just not blown away by it, that's all. Right. Yeah, I, I, was, I wasn't blown away either. I mean, our, our scores aren't that far apart. 
No, so. but a nine kind of kind of says blown away. In fact, I'm surprised. I was you on know, the edge of eight, five, and nine. I gotta say, slamming your score by any means, but like, you know, you're you're actually coming into this conversation a lot more reasonable than Shane is, and you had the same score as well, him. And I almost well, gave it an eight, five, but like the end, I, the end game did raise my opinion of the, of the game. The reason an eight is considered a bad score is because traditionally, blasphemy. Handheld Zeldas have been considered among the best. They get like tens, like Link's Awakening. You know, right. the, uh, the, the Capcom ones. The Capcom ones. So basically, by reviewing this game on its own merits, rather than saying, "Well, this is supposed to get a ten, so I better give it a ten. Yeah. That's why people are angry. Because people felt like you kind of came to this with an agenda of like giving Zelda the come up and it's been deserving. That's for why there. Are, that's why there are three reviews. It's true. <laughs> right. That because everybody has a different, different opinion. Opinions. I may not be the die-hard Zelda fan, no. but these are games that can be played by non-die-hard Zelda fans, you know, people, right? People can think what they want, but Milky actually, I know this, he wanted to be on this review. He was like, right. he talked to the reviews editors and said, put me on this review, I'm really looking forward to it. So the fact that he didn't give it a perfectly glowing score, I think says a lot about the game, because he went into it expecting something great. Am I not correct? Yeah, that's true. I think it's still important to to realize that we all think this is a good game. Right. It sounds, like, I think it's it sounds a, a little more game. negative than it really is. No, yeah. that's that's because people focus on the negative things. Like if you look at our comments, our blogs, our reviews, anything we've said about the game, people when they post it in blogs and they post it on forums, they take like the one or two negative sentences right. or paragraphs we write and completely ignore the rest. Milky still hates it. I love Zelda. I mean, I had to do a strategy guide for freaking Ocarina of Time, you know? So it's like, you better love some shit in order to do a strategy guide on stuff like that. But, you know, I just don't think this is the best Zelda that, I, I, I think they can do better. That I think that Phantom Hourglass is actually a good game. I mean, Right, you didn't give it a bad score. I didn't give it a bad yeah. score. I you gave, gave it an award-winning. Award apparently that's award not winning. for some people, you know?